What's going on guys? We've got another project going on in the shop tonight. Go ahead and show you guys what we got going here. We got some 20 foot lengths of stainless pipe. There's actually three sticks of 304 there and two sticks of 316. That's just what the customer had sitting on their rack. So we are going to be building two stand pipes going into a couple tanks. So I'll show you guys what we got here. So we got two tanks here. You can see the tanks. So these lines will come up and drop into the tank. This coupling is what's on the piping at the facility that I'm doing this for. So we'll drop the stainless pipe into this. The existing stand pipes for these tanks were carbon steel. So we're just going to replace them with stainless steel. We'll just drop them into this coupling and have to do one weld in the field here and one weld in the field on this one. So the measurements are close but they're not exactly the same and we're going to get our measurements all figured out. I do have a box of fittings and I'll, I'll run through those fittings with you guys real quick. Okay so here's our fitting. See we've got some reducers that reduce from inch and a half to two inch. That's all inch and a half pipe. We've got four inch and a half 90s. Got flanges here. Here's some three to two reducers. And then we've got two stainless steel globe valves. So there's all our fittings. These are two inch valves because that's what they had. We are gonna reduce these down. That's what the reducers are for. So I'll weld the two inch to inch and a half reducers on there and then obviously weld our pipe to that. So these are butt weld fittings. We've got some socket flanges here and that's what our three inch by two inch reducers are for. So these will weld to the flanges. So we got some good work here. This is some stuff, some different stuff that you guys probably haven't seen on the channel. I did do another stainless steel pipe job, but that one didn't include any flanges so we can touch on how to fit a flange and go over some of the tooling involved with that we'll be fitting two valves which i didn't have to do on the other pipeline the process itself in in figuring out how to come up with my measurements is pretty much all the same i'll go over it again real quick um, in case anybody out there didn't see my first video on stainless steel pipe We'll go through the process again on this one the exact same way. Hopefully you guys can get something good out of it. So I'm going to grab a tape measure, pen, maybe a calculator, and we'll start doing our calculations for the piping. Get these all figured out. So just to recap a little bit, I pull all my measurements off center of piping. The reason I do that is whether you're fitting with butt weld fittings or whether you're fitting with socket fittings as long as you pull the measurements center of pipe you can always figure out what length you need to cut your pipe let's go over this so we're gonna start here we've got 11 and a quarter from face of flange to center of pipe here a good rule of thumb for fitting pipe one and a half times the diameter. So for you guys that haven't fitted pipe, if I set this on here, it's the center of my pipe here, and it's the center of my pipe here. So if my measurement is center of pipe, it's two and a quarter inches from the face of the fitting to the center of the pipe. We know that the offset of a one and a half inch 90 is gonna be two and a quarter. Okay, so what we've got here is 11 and a quarter is the measurement from center of pipe to face of flange. So we're gonna deduct our 90, our offset on our 90, which is two and a quarter. So we're gonna go 11.25 minus 2.25. So that leaves us nine inches. So now we're nine inches from here to the face of the flange. Then we've got our socket flange here and we need to know what the distance is from the face of the flange to where our pipe fits down in the socket. Three eighths of an inch. So we've got to deduct three eighths of an inch. So we'll minus 0.375. If you do a lot of this type of fitting and calculations, you get to know the decimal conversion for fractional measurements. 
Anyway, moving on. So we subtracted our 3 eighths, so we're at 8.625. Okay, so the next thing we got to figure out is we've got a reducer here. So the reducer is what's going to drop in here. So I'm just going to take and measure this off the table. So it's three and a half inches. So minus 3.5. So we're five and an eighth. 5.125. Our piece of pipe that we've got to cut that connects from the elbow to the reducer to the flange. That one length of pipe that we've got to cut is five and an eighth inch long. But you got to remember, we're going to gap this twice because we've got a gap here where it hooks to the elbow, and there's another gap here. So we're doing 16th inch gaps. So we're going to deduct another eighth of an inch, which leaves us with five inches because we minus our eighth inch, which is 0.125. So if you minus your 0.125, you're left with five inches. And then I like to make a cut list. So I'm just going to completely build this one first and then we'll move to the next one. The other good thing with that is, and this sounds bad, but if you build one at a time, if you screw something up on one of them, usually you can learn from that screw up and not have to cut multiple pieces apart. That way if you screw up, you're only cutting one piece apart versus both of them apart. I do like to double check my measurements, so I'm gonna check all these one more time after we go through them. If you guys are doing these type of calculations, this is something you're gonna to wanna to look into. I wanna say I got this for free when I ordered some tooling from MSC Direct, I believe. I ordered some machine tooling and I ordered an SPI gauge and I believe they sent this for free with it. But you can get on any one of those uh, machine tool websites and you'll be able to find these. But what it is is it's a conversion chart. If you're doing the calculations for piping or whatever it may be and you're doing the calculations on the calculator so it's obviously in decimal form and you can't remember what 0 .3750 is you can look here and say oh it's 3 8 So I would recommend getting one of these hanging it in your shop. The other thing it's super useful for is if you get into drilling and tapping and doing some of this machine stuff gives you drill and tap sizes and it's just a very handy thing to have it also has metric on here and converts it to what what the closest imperial measurement is in decimal form definitely something you guys want to look into if you're doing calculations all right so i'm going to run back through those measurements and double check them make sure they're good once i'm sure that those measurements are correct and those are the lengths that i want to cut my pipe We'll go over the saw and we'll start cutting these. We'll go to that point. Okay, so here we have an 80 and 1 8 inch piece. We're gonna take 80 and 1 8 inch. We're gonna deduct, obviously that measurement is from the center of this pipe to the center of this pipe. If I deduct 80 and an eighth, 80.125 minus two and a quarter, two and a quarter, four and a half minus 4.5 equals your 75 and 5 eighths there. So if you take your 75 and 5 eighths, you're gonna deduct a 16th gap here and a 16th gap here. So you're gonna deduct an eighth of an inch. So you're gonna end up 75 and a half. So if I take that measurement, minus 0.125 equals 75 and a half. Okay. Okay, and then the last one, so I've got a valve here and I forgot that. Sort of. <laughs> so this valve needs to be 14 and a half inches on center from the top of this coupling to here. So what I had to do is I figured out the length of this pipe from edge of 90 to where our stick in on our coupling is. So we know that length is 107 and 15 sixteenths. So what I did is I took the measurement from the edge of the 90 to the stick in here. I deducted that because our 14 and a half inches is from there to the center of valve. Once I knew that, then I went ahead and figured out the measurement of what the width of the valve is with the two reducers, because we've got the valve and then a two to inch and a half reducer on each end. So I, I'm gonna weld those up first. So I figured out what the measurement is from the OD of the one side to the other. So the complete OD 
um, the measurement on that 11 and 5 eighths. So if I take half of that, I ended up with 5 and 13 sixteenths. Well, that's what I did. I took 14 and a half, deducted 5 and 13 sixteenths from center of valve to this, the edge of this reducer. And then I had to add my 3 quarters of an inch. That gave me 9 and 3 eighths of an inch. So this piece of pipe from here to here is 9 and 3 eighths of an inch. And then I basically just did the other, the same thing on the other end. I did my math to get center of valve. And then from center of the valve, I deducted another 5 and 13 sixteenths to get to here. And then I deducted sixteenth of an inch for weld gap. That gave me 86 and 13 sixteenths. The good news is, if anything, I think I'm going to be long. If, if I am long, I think it's going to be long. And if that's the case, I know what the distance needs to be, 107 and 15 sixteenths, from here to here so I can get all this tacked up check my measurement make sure it's long enough make sure the measurement is in fact 107 and 15 sixteenths and then I'll be good if I need to trim it a little bit that's no big deal but we just want it to be 14 and a half inches center of valve from the top of this coupling to here that was a little complicated hopefully you guys are following me but We've got our cut lengths now, an 86 and 13 sixteenths piece, a 9 and 3 eighths piece, a 75 and a half piece, and a 5 inch piece. And that will give us our 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces that we need to be able to start fitting all of these. So now we can go over to the saw and we'll start working on our cut list here and get these cut out. Okay, so we got our parts cut here. We do have one small chunk. Both this piece and this small piece over here. I'm gonna bevel the ones that I can in the lathe. It's just quicker and easier, does a cleaner job. So I'm gonna do the small ones in the lathe and then you guys have seen me use the pipe treader before to do the bigger ones, so. We'll go ahead and get these beveled and go from there. Okay, so there's our freshly beveled pieces. You see it does a nice clean job. And when you match them up together, it gives you a nice, perfect joint. Those are done. Now I gotta do these, and I gotta look, I gotta check the print. 
So our 86 and 13 sixteenths piece needs beveled on both ends. So does our 75 and a half piece. Okay. I just wanted to check and make sure. A lot of times I bevel one end that doesn't need to be beveled, so I just wanted to make sure. But I'll bevel this end, this end, this end, this end. Only one end here, because that one goes into a socket. Same with this one. One end beveled, the other does not need to be. So that's good that I did both sides. Didn't need to be. That's usually how it rolls for me. Okay, so I can go ahead and get those beveled, and then those pieces are all prepped, and then we can start fitting. So, let's see what we can do. Okay, so I usually like to tack everything up with 16th inch. This is 316 stainless TIG rod. I'm running my machine at about 125 amps, but I am running a foot pedal, so I got variable amperage. I'm running 100% argon. I am running a liquid cooled torch off of my Miller XMT 350 machine. So that's the setup. So now all that's left to do is we're gonna tack it up. So this here, we've obviously got machine surface on machine surface so I'm, I'm gonna be good just to tack it. I'm gonna center it up the best I can. Um, I know you guys have heard me talk before about how stainless pulls so that's one of the things that you have to prepare for. One of the things that you have to keep in mind when you're tacking stuff up. So I'll tack and then I'll hurry and bounce over and tack the other side because if I don't, when this tack cools, it's gonna pull it quite a ways. So sometimes I'll compensate for that too, depending on what the joint is. So let's see if we can't get this tacked up. Okay, so I've got that all tacked up. It's nice and centered. So we can go ahead and just weld this out. Now this is a socket fitting, so I can't really purge this because you're not gonna be able to get gas up underneath there. 
So typically with socket fittings, they're harder to purge. So in this case, I'm not going to purge this. I'm just going to go ahead and weld this up. So where this is a, a heavier joint, I'm probably going to turn my welder up a little more. And I'm also using 332 rod on these socket joints. So I'm going to turn up the welder and get after it. Okay, so I turned it up to 150 amps. Okay, so I've got my 16th inch gap tool here. It's just a piece of 16th inch TIG rod. I bend in half, set that on my fitting here, set the fitting on top. I'm going to center it up the best I can. Then I'm going to throw a tack on that. Okay. So now what I like to do, if you try to tack the other side and leave this in there, that stainless will shrink so tight that it'll it'll jam this in there, you are gonna have a heck of a time getting it out. So now I take my level and I check it. Okay, I know my table's level. So I'm going to leave a little bit to where it's going to pull when I tack it and it's going to bring it right into level. Or that's the plan. <laughs> going to do that two more times. I'm going to tack this one on while I'm here, might as well. So I'm going to take my gap tool, set this piece of pipe on there, center it up, same thing. Ow. If anybody's interested, I'm using a number seven cup with a gas lens. Okay, now typically when I fit these fittings, if I haven't machined these, I'll check them off the side. Because if you have a face on your pipe that was cut with a grinder and that you are pretty sure is not 100% square and you check it on top of the level if the face isn't square of this piece of material then it's giving you a false reading so the reason I'm checking these is because they're machined edges so I know they're square so if I check the sides right on the money okay so that's all tacked up looks good so now I'm gonna get it over in the vise and I'm gonna to have to tape it up purge it and then I'll be able to start welding this out okay so we got our fitting up here I'm gonna go ahead and tape this off and I usually use frog tape to tape up my joints I'm gonna have a purge hose coming in the back here Okay, so I got my joints taped up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this back. I'm going to weld this so that it keeps positive pressure of the purge gas pushing the gas on the inside out just a little bit. I don't want to, you know, I don't want it pushing the weld back at me just a little bit. I usually run my purge gas at like 
I don't know, three or four pounds. And that's way too high. Okay, so you can see it's just barely Okay, so we're we'll go ahead and so we're purging this. You can see I got it all taped up. I got my purge hose here. This is just a some of that green gas hose you can get from any welding supply store. And you can see I got it hooked up to my other argon bottle. So I'm purging, and now I'm going to go ahead and weld this out. I only do this for my root pass. When you purge it, the gas on the inside with the positive pressure is pushing the gas out and it's actually shielding the weld on the inside. So that's why we purge it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't knock these roots out. Now that the root pass is done, shut my purge gas off, peel all the tape off. So now I can go ahead and do the cover pass over the top of this. Typically with this size of pipe, I usually only have to run two passes. So that's kind of the plan. So now I'm gonna go to that point.
So we got this piece all fit up. Wire brushed it both ends. So this section is done. So now we're ready to tack our small piece on here. And that will go on this end. Just a quick little tip. You always want to make sure you check the valve that you're going to be welding on. Or bolting on for that matter. Whenever you're installing a valve, you always want to make sure you get the flow direction on the valve correct. I'm saying this from experience. At one of my previous jobs, I welded one of these valves on backwards and I never heard the end of it. That was just one of those legendary screw ups that you end up taking flack for for the rest of your life. And if you're watching, you know who you are. So anyway, just make sure you check the valve because they'll usually always have a flow direction on them. Unless the flow direction doesn't matter and then they won't have anything on them. But it's always a good idea to check before you go ahead and weld it out. So just a quick little tip. Okay, so I want to show you guys what I'm doing here. So I got the valve in the vise. It's all leveled up. This piece is tacked on. This is the piece that's going to drop in the coupling at the facility. I've got this handy dandy pipe clamp here. It's a hand clamp pipe. And I've got it clamped on the fitting. And I got this pipe in here. I've gapped it at a 16th inch. So I'm going to tack this here, and then I'm going to put a tack on the bottom. Then I'm going to have to rotate it 90 and check to make sure it's level this way so that I make sure that the pipe is in line. I don't want it to be <whistles> ski womper. So I'm going to go ahead and get two tacks on this, and then I'll rotate it, and I'll check it for level there. This is just kind of how pipe fitting goes. It's a tedious process. so. We're going to go to that point.
Okay, so we're just getting this all fit up here. I like to fit my 90s on the table if I can. It's nice and flat. I go ahead and stick my gapping tool in there. Get my get my tack on the top done. Flip it over, tack the other side. Okay, so obviously if your table's level, and I fit this up like this, if I take my level and I set it on my fitting, makes it pretty slick to fit these. Okay, so with this, I'm going to turn it on its side like that, and I'll clamp it down to where it's level. So then I'll come down to this end, I'll fit 90 the same way, because that's basically what we got going. We got our U-shaped piece here, and then I'll be able to fit this, and then they should be in line with each other. So I'm going to grab a clamp and clamp that down. Okay, so that's another cool thing you can do with that clamp. So now I'll take my 90, I'm going to fit it the same way. I'm going to throw the shim under here. The OD of the fitting is just a little bit bigger than the OD of the pipe. Okay, we got these done, both ends, got them all cleaned up. So now we're ready to get this section here tacked up to this section here. So we'll see what we can't get done. Okay, so we are getting ready to fit this piece to our piece with the two elbows on it. I'm hoping I've got enough elevation on my pipe stands that I can get it up to here. I'm gonna try it, see what happens. Our tooling showed up today, so we're gonna be able to fit our flange here. So we'll go to that point. It's time for today's super cool tool. So for today's super cool tool segment, we're going to be talking about this tool right here. These are called two hole pins. This is a very common tool for guys that weld a lot of pipe. I've used a lot of different sets of two hole pins over the course of my career as a welder. And I consider myself pretty lucky because I've been able to try out numerous types of tools and numerous brands of tools. 
And so I've used quite a few different brands of two hole pins. You can get some cheap ones off of Amazon. The thing I don't like about some of the ones you can get on Amazon is they're made out of aluminum, which is not a bad thing when you're fitting them up. It's kind of nice that they're light, but the problem is if you drop them, the part that's going to get damaged the worst is this taper end right here. And for some reason, it's kind of like dropping toast. It always lands butter side down. This always gets damaged when you drop them. It just ends up that way. So I definitely would opt for something made out of steel. These are made out of steel. They've got some coarse knurling on them, so they're easier to handle. And the way this quick pin system works is there's a button here. So I'm able to push this button and I can just pull that right off. What it does is it disengages the threads on the inside. And so when I put it on the flange, I got my flange here, I slide it in, push the button, I can drive it all the way in and then give it one little twist and it's set on the flange. Once you get the pins in, Tighten those up. The whole purpose that these pins have is so that you can stick a level on there and then you are exactly lined up with the bolt centers. When you're fitting pipe, you have to get your bolt centers lined up level or square, however you want to say it, to your piping. Let me give you a scenario. I've ran into times in the past where the guy before me welded some pipe up and he didn't use two hole pins or he didn't use the correct tool for the job. He used bolts instead of two hole pins. And so he threw a level on it and got it as close as he could and he tacked it on there. Well, the problem is if that's clocked a few degrees, when I go to match it up, if I fit it the right way, my holes aren't gonna match up with his holes. So the good thing is I can take these pins, put them on the existing flange, throw a level on it, and if it's out a quarter bubble, then I fit my new section of piping with the flange out a quarter bubble. And I've had to do that stuff before. That's, that's real world type work. It happens. It's not the correct way, but it happens. There's a lot of people out there that don't always do things the correct way. And then the guy that follows usually ends up having to make up for it. So there's a lot of scenarios where these are useful. They are a very specific tool. They're specifically meant for fitting pipe. And so if you fit a lot of pipe, if you fit a lot of flanges, I would definitely check out the Sumner Quick Pins brand. They've been great for me in the past. They're my favorite set. That's why I opted to buy them. Um, if you're talking cost, you're looking about a hundred bucks. I believe these ones on Zorro were about $97 and it was free shipping so check them out check out two hole pins there's some other brands out there that make great products flange wizard makes a great product uh, they make great pipe fitting tools and they've got multiple multiple pipe fitting tools so check them out i do believe that sumner is the only brand that makes the quick pins i've never seen any other brand that has a similar function as that so that's one of the things i like it's just quicker, it's more convenient, and they've always been accurate for me. I've never had an issue with accuracy or anything like that. So, so check out the Sumner Quick Pins. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment section below, and let's get back to the project. Okay, we're level here on our two hole. So now what we need to do is we need to take our square, come off the face of this, and we'll measure as close as we can to the face of the flange, and then we'll come to the far end of the square and measure that end. That will tell us if we're parallel, if the face of this flange is parallel with this pipe. So let's check that now. And I'm gonna peel this tape down so that I can get my square 
flush on the face of this. Okay, so we're 10 and 3 16 close to the flange. And we're 10 and a quarter on the other end. So I'm going to leave that where it is. That's just about perfect. And the reason I'm going to leave it where it's a 16th out is because I'm going to tack this side first and that's going to pull it together just a hair. It'll probably stay 10 and 3 16 on this end, but it'll probably be either right on or just a little bit shy of 10 and 3 16 on this end because when you tack it, it's going to pull it together. So I'm going to gap this just a little bit, a 16th of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to tack that. I want to check my pipe one more time before I tack it. I usually always check everything one more time before I tack it. But we want to check this and make sure that it's level. Okay, and it's a little out. That's why you check. Okay, so we're level there. We're level on our two hole. We know we're really close to square. I'm going to gap this, and now it's ready to tack. Fitting pipe can be really tedious, but it's one of those things where if you take the time to make it as perfect as you can, when you go to fit it up, even if it's moved a little bit, which it's going to, but even if it's pulled a little bit and shrunk a little bit, stuff like that, it's still going to be close enough that it's going to fit together with no issues most of the time, and that's why I try to take the time and make sure that all the finer details are as close to perfect as possible and it usually pays off in the long run and I, I feel like it's that way with really anything so let's get this tacked up. Okay, show you guys what I got going here. So I figured it was easier to set this leg on the table and obviously I had to have a pipe stand underneath the flange to keep it supported otherwise it would just fall. So we got that supported. It's level. We come over here. Our pipe is level. Our valve is level. So everything's level. I gotta throw a square on this and get this square. This joint, this joint here is, feels good, it's flush. So I gotta throw my gap tool in there and then we'll go ahead and get it tacked. <clears throat> Sometimes I like to tack it first and then I can square it up, it's just easier that way. So I may do that, I may gap it, tack the top, tack the bottom, then I could still move it this way. So we'll get that tacked right now.
we got the weld inspector out here checking on things he got his boots on huh you say hi say hi you say hi say hi say hi hi yeah okay so we got that all tacked up I got my tape on there it's purging right now I like to let it purge for a minute before I start welding push all the air out of the inside of the pipe and displace it with argon so argon's in this end valves open we got that one joint to do and then that's our standpipe anybody that doesn't know what a standpipe is it's just a pipe I can kind of show you on my drawing if this is the tank so you got a big tank here standpipe is the pipe that goes up over and drops the fluid into the top of the tank so that's our standpipe we got this one here will be built after this weld we got one more to do the exact same design just measurements are just a little bit different This standpipe is done. I double checked all my measurements again just to make sure they were right. Everything looks good, so this one's ready to go. So I'm going to grab it, set it off to the side, and then start figuring out the measurements for the second one. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but this piece here. I figured five inches because I was doing the math from this reducer to here but actually then I realized I had to put reducer reducer to get it down to inch and a half pipe and that ended up being inch and seven eighths right here so for this second one here you guys have seen how I do the first one it's basically the exact same part I'm probably just gonna go into time lapse Hopefully I can give you guys a good bird's eye view and you can see everything that I'm doing. Hopefully I didn't miss anything when I explained what I was doing. So we'll go into warp mode and we'll start getting the other one cut and fit up. Let's do it.
All right, guys, so we went ahead and warped right through fitting all this up and welding up these sections. We still have the drop leg right there at the top coming down that needs to get welded on, but that piece is all ready to go. Problem is, we need another reducer that goes from two to inch and a half here. I was short that one reducer, so I'm gonna have to either pick one up or talk to the facility that I'm doing this for, see if they got another one, and I'll either pick it up or they'll have one of their guys drop it off or something like that. So I gotta wait on that piece. I decided to just go ahead and fit everything else up. I've leveled this pipe. Obviously it's square on the table. I've leveled it up. And then I've leveled this section up off of this leg. So just to show you guys what I mean. We're level there. We're level there. Got my handy dandy pipe hand clamp on here. Got a gap to the 16th inch. So I'm ready to tack that, so I'll tack the top, tack the bottom, and then I gotta check it for square this way. And once I do that, I'll tack these other two and go ahead and weld that one out. And then the only thing left to do is to tack this on. My plan is to slap the reducer on here, weld it out, and then obviously put my two hole pins in square it off the pipe section and then weld it out and then this second one is done so I've checked distance from center of pipe there to there that measurements right on I am gonna check this just to make sure that this length is right on before I go ahead and weld that out but I am gonna tack that and then that should be good so I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a rundown on where I'm at now all right Go ahead and tack this up, check the measurement, and then we'll weld it out. Hey guys, we got that all welded out, cleaned up. So that's as far as I can go right now until I get that reducer. So I'm going to call that a day. So you guys can see over the course of a couple days, I've been able to knock this out. For those of you who don't know, I do work a full-time job and then I do this on the side. Some days I have more time than others. Obviously, I've got four kids too, so I got a lot of stuff going on besides my full-time job and a business. So that's probably going to wrap this video up. Obviously, I didn't get the flange fit on, but I've got to I've got to keep stuff moving through the shop here and I want to keep the videos coming too. So that's going to wrap this one up. You guys saw how I fit up the flange on the first one. It's going to look exactly like this one you can see the holes are square to the pipe so that'll be exactly the same it's basically the exact same setup as this stand pipe only the measurements were different on this one so really all i have left to do is just mount that flange onto this and i'm just going to do it the same way i did the other one i'll slide it off the edge of the table use a pipe stand to support the flange two hole it tack it up so Hope you guys were able to learn something from this one. It's always nice when I can give you guys some fresh new content, stuff that you haven't seen me do before. 
and you guys have seen me do some stainless pipe but I don't think I had any flange fitting going on on that one so it was good for you guys to see that if you guys have any questions comments drop them in the comment section below I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys learned something remember to like subscribe and share and we'll see you on the next one We are going to be building two pipe stands. We're we got some good work here that um, hopefully there's some. Um, I am running a liquid cooled torch off of my X temp. I am running an X. I am running an. I am running a liquid cooled torch off of my Miller XMT350 machine. So, and I've used a lot of two hole pin. I've 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 used a lot of different sets of two hole pins in pre. You're still going to be close enough that it's going to fit together smooth with no if. Uh, I, pre I appreciate <clears throat>